Are we in a housing bubble? I've seen this question many a times. And according to every available measure, the median home sales price in the United States are at a record high, and they show little signs of cooling off. The following graph shows the increase year over year for the last three years and a continued growth on median house prices for this year. This has many people questioning the memories of the real estate debacle in the 2000s. They've wondered if this crazy market will end up crashing like it did back then. But here's the good news. It's not the same. Today's strong housing market is significantly different. It is healthier and it could keep pushing along for many more years. Back in the mid 2000s, after a systemic, systematic dismantling of financial regulations, the real estate market rallied for all the wrong reasons. Number one, the no doc mortgages. In other words, people were giving mortgages without being approved and verifying the borrower's financial condition. Number two, an appraisal industry that went wild. And number three, the paid for triple A credit rating for derivative pro products such as stocks, bonds, currency, and a few more that were backed by junk quality mortgage loans. The real estate boom was built on a flimsy foundation and accordingly, it went tumbling down. This crisis was severe. We all remember it. And if you don't, then you need to go look it up. It was an interesting time and we have no desire to repeat this history. Now, how is today's market any different? Reason number one, there is no credit boom. Very little of that is happening today. Banks have adopted with force a much more stringent stringent lending standard. This leads to the lowest ratio of real estate loans to total loans for commercial banks since the 1980s. I have a graph here that shows the trend for the real estate loans as a percentage of assets. It shows the progressive drop since 2005 and the current lowest point since the 1980s. But have you tried applying for, the, for a mortgage in the last few years? You sit on pins and needles for a few weeks while someone goes through your financials with a fine tooth comb. It invokes a little bit of anxiety and you are almost afraid to buy groceries, spend a little too much and you might lose it but it is well worth the wait come closing time. Since the boom and bust real estate crisis are most often rooted in lending bubbles, the decline in real estate lending suggests that the push of today's market in residential property is not due to speculation. What does speculation mean? In this case, it is an economic term to describe the purchase of an asset with the hope that it will become more valuable in the near future. Rather, it is the consequence of a demand supply imbalance that was years in the making. Reason number two why we're not in a housing bubble. There is a huge shortage of homes. Builders were hit hard by the real estate crisis in 2008, and it took a really long time for them to get back on their feet and resume their normal operations. As a result, the supply of new homes fell well behind the mounting need for the demand arising simply from the growth in the number of households across the United States. This graph that I have represents the number of new builds over the year. The financial crisis of 2008 dealt a massive blow to the construction industry. 
and starts for privately owned housing units took a deep dive. It has only recently inched up to the average levels and as a result, housing supply is still well behind the demand. Taking a look at this graph, new homes being built took a deep dive in 2007. And if you look, it has recently began to rise to the average level. It took a long time to begin the recovery. Therefore, it is believed that the supply is still well below the demand for houses. This supply and demand imbalance grew largely under the radar for two reasons. One is that it took some time for consumers to rebuild their own finances before they were ready to buy homes. And the other related reason is the number of new households dropped in the aftermath of the crisis as it often does after a recession. This graph shows the comparable data for new homes available to the number of households. The availability of new housing units fell well behind the creation of new households. And as a result, there is still a supply deficit being carried since the financial crisis. In fact, according to the United States Census Bureau, there were fewer households in 2020 than in 2019. The first time ever that this number shrank from one year to the next. This is due to the unique characteristics of the 2020 recession. Lockdowns in place forced some to consolidate living quarters and it set up the conditions for a sharp snapback of demand for new homes taking place today. On the other side, thanks to the stimulus packages and the slowed spending patterns during the pandemic, the savings rate grew to the highest on record. This is setting the stage for a sharp rebound in the number of new households this year and possibly the next. The sharp rebound could contribute to the housing deficit, prolonging the conditions for strong demand. And as long as the demand remains higher than the supply, we're not going to be in a housing bubble or this trend will continue. Reason number three why we're not in a housing bubble. Homes are more affordable than ever. Now I know that sounds strange, but most remarkably, homes are at their most affordable in more than a generation. Now, when we speak of more affordable, we are not talking about our personal feelings on affordability. It's about the ratio of mortgage to income. Mortgage payments for the median or the middle, the middle home in the United States have not been this low as a percentage of the household income since at least 1984, when data tracking for household income began, and probably for several decades before that. This graph that I have represents the mortgage payments for the median home are most affordable on record. It shows they are at a most affordable level. And although home prices continue to climb, a combination of low mortgage rates and higher household incomes have rendered mortgage payments for a 30 year mortgage on the median home sold the most affordable ever. Mortgage rates or home prices would have to roughly double for this percent to climb from at least one quarter of the household income as it is today to about one third where it was for a decade before the pandemic. Moreover, this is based on the full median price of the United States home. Considering that mortgages typically cover 70% of the purchase price, the affordability of the monthly payments may be even higher, at least before taking into the account of a down payment that's required upfront. The conclusion is that 
despite the noticeable increase of real estate prices and the lack in home inventory that realtors report everywhere, there seem to be no signs of a real estate bubble. With homes being affordable and scarce, it would appear that prices may have considerably more upside before they can be considered expensive. It's driven by the supply and demand model. The backlog in housing builds could take years to resolve, especially if construction activities slow down in response to the higher cost for building materials earlier this year. One caveat is that this analysis only applies to the vast middle of American consumers, but the top and bottom tiers require different considerations. At the high end of the spectrum, high-end home sales and prices have surged more than for the average priced home, according to a recent report by real estate brokerage Redfin. Here is the graph representing the high-end median home price trends. The median home sales price skyrocketed this year, and this is especially true for the high-end tier. Measuring affordability for higher priced homes relative to the mortgage rates is probably inadequate since many high-end sales are often transacted in cash. But given the, the yawning wealth gap between top earners and the rest, it stands to reason that as a percentage of total wealth, the high-end market is also far from approaching a bubble territory. As long as the wealth gap persists and there is little reason to assume otherwise, the outlook for the top tier of real estate market seems just as unlikely to suffer as the middle tier. Now the flip side. On the opposite end of the spectrum, however, lies a sizable number of people who were devastated by the pandemic and recovery has been difficult to say the least. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, as many as 2 million homeowners were in forbearance plans as recently as last May. About half of those plans are set to expire later this year. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Bureau has proposed a ruling banning mortgage servicers from starting foreclosures until 2022. As it is often the case, not everyone benefits from a strong market and some still need a lifeline to get to the other side. On aggregate, the real estate market may be the best it's been in many decades. Not everyone is benefiting and those who do wonder if a bubble is building up. This doesn't seem to be the case. If you have any questions or curiosities about real estate, go ahead and send me a message. Comment below if you have any questions or just wanna have a conversation. I'm here for you. I'll see you guys soon.